iPhones are known for being easy to use, and there's really no wrong way to use them. But a lot of people are either missing out on some powerful features or they've skipped some important steps when first setting up their phone. So here's a list of every mistake I can think of when it comes to beginner iPhone users. Mistake number one, you're manually closing apps thinking it saves battery. Wrong. iOS is designed to manage apps in the background using advanced algorithms. When an app is not being used, iOS suspends it, meaning it stays in memory without using CPU or significant power. These suspended apps use almost no resources and are ready to relaunch quickly. If you manually quit an app, reopening it requires the CPU to reload the app entirely into memory, and this process consumes more power than resuming a suspended app. So don't worry about apps running in the background. Mistake number two, not setting up medical ID. I know a guy who's a paramedic, and he once told me they use the medical ID on iPhones way more than you'd think. If you're not familiar, the medical ID feature is a built-in tool designed to provide critical health information to first responders, medical personnel, or anyone assisting you in an emergency, even if your iPhone is locked. It's part of the Health app and can save lives by giving access to essential details quickly when time is critical. You can input details like name and photo, date of birth, medical conditions, allergies and reactions, medications, blood type, organ donor status, and emergency contact information. If you don't have medical ID set up, you can do it through the Health app. Tap your profile on the top right corner and choose Medical ID. Then add all the information you want to share. This is one of those things that you hopefully won't ever need, but if this gives me a better chance of surviving in an emergency, I'll gladly take advantage of it. Mistake number three, ignoring backups. I bet you have a big portion of your life stored on your phone, and the data loss caused by a stolen device or just generic technical issues would be pretty painful. iPhones, just like any consumer electronics, can have unexpected issues, and you'll want to make sure your important files are safely backed up. There's two easy options when it comes to this. Either use iCloud backups, which makes the process super easy and wireless. I'm usually against any kind of paid subscriptions, but I will say the iCloud Plus cloud storage has been well worth the money, and it allows me and my family to have all our photos and backups in the cloud. You don't need to pay for iCloud Plus to use iCloud backups, but it does expand your available storage, which is something that I find helpful. If you prefer local backups over cloud storage, you can back up your phone by plugging it into your computer. On a Mac, you can do this directly through Finder. On a Windows computer, you can download the Apple Devices application and use that to back up your iPhone. Mistake number four, not setting up an Apple account. Go to your settings and on the very top, you'll see your Apple account. This was formerly known as Apple ID and it's your personal account used to access and manage all of Apple's services and devices. It provides you access to services like iCloud, App Store, iMessage, FaceTime, etc. It also links and syncs data across devices. So whether you already own multiple devices or plan on getting another Apple device in the future, you should definitely set up an Apple account. You can think of this as the master key to the Apple ecosystem, and your user experience will be much smoother with it. Mistake number five, something my wife still hasn't learned, is keeping your iOS updated. Your iPhone is pretty good at installing smaller minor updates automatically in the background, but sometimes bigger updates need to be installed manually. Keeping your phone up to date will keep your device more secure and gives you access to newest features. It also ensures you have all the latest bug fixes and maximizes compatibility between apps and devices. The only time you should be cautious when updating is immediately after a major iOS update. For example, switching from iOS 17 to iOS 18. These larger updates can sometimes have unexpected issues in the very beginning. So some people prefer to wait a few weeks before updating. Mistake number six, not managing your storage. I recently saw a commercial by a mobile carrier where someone basically said, well, my storage is full, time for a new phone, I guess. And it reminded me how little some people know about storage management and how companies are trying to exploit that by offering you a new phone with more storage. I can guarantee no matter how large your storage is, you'll eventually run out 
unless you learn how to properly manage it. I have a full video showing how to clear up space on an iPhone, so check it out if you're interested in learning more. I'll link it in the description. Mistake number seven is not utilizing keyboard gestures. Your phone has a lot of hidden keyboard gestures that make typing faster and more efficient. A couple of my favorites include typing by swiping your finger across the keyboard or holding down the spacebar to precisely move the cursor across the text on your screen. Another cool trick I like to use is to hold down the spacebar to go into the precise move mode, and then if you tap a second finger on your spacebar, it allows you to highlight words quickly and precisely. Mistake number eight, not utilizing Apple Pay. Apple Pay is a mobile payment and digital wallet service that allows you to make secure contactless payments using your Apple devices. It simplifies the payment process in stores, apps, and on websites without needing a physical card. It uses tokenization, meaning your actual card number is never shared with merchants, and each transaction requires authentication through either Face ID, Touch ID, or your device passcode, adding a layer of security. This has saved me a couple of times when I had to buy something but forgot my wallet at home. Plus, wireless payments like this are always more secure compared to inserting your card into card readers. I have a separate video explaining everything about Apple Pay, and you'll find a link to that in the description below. Mistake number nine, not utilizing Siri. I've seen Siri get mocked a lot lately for being stupid and not being able to handle things that we can do with ChatGPT, but it's still extremely useful. I use it regularly to set timers, reminders, check sports scores, and to get directions while driving. And obviously, there's a lot more you can do with it. It can't handle everything, and sometimes it fails to answer simple questions. But there are many ways you can speed up or automate tasks with the help of Siri. Mistake number 10, not customizing your privacy and security settings. iOS offers amazing flexibility and customization options when it comes to privacy. You can choose which applications have access to your physical location, which apps can access your photo library. Or what about your camera and microphone? You probably don't want to give every app access to your camera and microphone. If you haven't gone through your privacy settings, now is a good time to do so. Obviously, sometimes your apps need access to certain things to be able to function, but it's good to be aware what's needed and what's not. One of the most important things is the tracking setting on the very top. Pretty much every app and company out there love to track your activity across other apps and websites to learn about you as a consumer. This setting allows you to prevent apps from tracking you, and it shows you a list of apps that have previously asked for permission to track your activity. Switch it off, and the apps won't be able to track you. Moving on to mistake 11. Man, you guys are making a lot of mistakes. You know the control center, this one here? Chances are, you're not taking full advantage of the customization options here. Rearrange and reorganize it to your liking. Resize the buttons or add more controls. This changed a lot with the latest iOS 18 update. And if you haven't customized yours, I highly recommend giving it a try. Mistake number 12. You're not using the Find My app. This app is brilliant because it allows you to track and locate all your Apple devices in real time. I've seen numerous cases where people were able to locate their stolen device using this. You can play a sound to find your device, or if you've lost a device, you can activate Lost Mode, which will lock your device and display a custom message like your contact information. You can also use it to erase data remotely if you can't recover your device. One thing I find really cool about this is the Find My Network. This allows other nearby Apple devices to detect a Bluetooth signal from a lost device, which makes it possible to track devices even when your phone is turned off or when it's not connected to Wi-Fi or cellular data. Mistake number 13, not using AirDrop. AirDrop is probably one of the most popular features on iPhones, yet there are people who aren't aware of it. It allows you to wirelessly send photos, files, or pretty much anything to nearby Apple devices. Whether it's your own devices or friends and family, it makes sharing anything super easy. And like I said, it can be anything, like this web page here, for example. The best part? Sharing files via AirDrop does not require an internet connection. And the last mistake belongs to my buddy, who was once sitting on my couch watching sports on his phone. I asked him why he doesn't airplay it on my TV and he didn't know what AirPlay is. 
you'll find it under screen mirroring in your control center. And it's pretty awesome because it works with a bunch of different TVs, so you don't necessarily need an Apple TV to do this. And that concludes my list of beginner mistakes with an iPhone. Do you agree with these? Would you add anything to the list? Let me know in the comments.